Imagine a roof with the look of traditional shingles and the strength and durability of steel. Introducing Springhouse Shingles. Now you can have it both ways. This video will demonstrate the basics of how easily Springhouse Shingles can be installed on a new roof or even right on top of old asphalt shingles for a roof that is virtually maintenance free for a lifetime. The installation techniques shown in this video were performed using a mock roof designed to demonstrate how Springhouse Shingles can be installed on a new roof or over top of existing shingles. As such, it shows the basic techniques in preparation and installation on a typical gable roof. However, since it was performed on a mock roof, some important safety procedures are not necessarily shown. Compliance with local building codes is the responsibility of the installer, so it is extremely important that prior to the start of installation, the installer is aware of all local building codes and ensures that all steps and techniques used throughout the installation will comply with those codes. The efficacy of installation techniques used in this demonstration video have been field proven and are considered acceptable by the manufacturer of Springhouse Shingles. The techniques shown are not the only acceptable installation techniques, but we've chosen to use them as a reference for experienced installers and as a conceptual guide for new installers. Hence, this video is supplemental to the comprehensive written Springhouse Shingles installation manual that is included with the purchase of Springhouse Shingles. Because Springhouse has no control over the installation procedures used, the Springhouse warranty does not cover the installation of the product per se. It does, however, warrant Springhouse shingles against manufacturing defects and finish failure for a total of 40 years. For more details, visit our website at springhousesteelshingles.com. Installers should wear protective gloves and eye protection and must be properly tied off at all times. They should also wear rubber or soft-soled shoes for enhanced safety and to avoid potential damage to the shingles during installation. Please note that the tools shown here are required to install Springhouse steel shingles. The first step in installation is roof preparation. So let's go first to a portion of our mock roof on which we'll install Springhouse steel shingles over top of old asphalt shingles. When re-roofing over existing shingles, the first objective is to ensure the old surface is relatively flat and free from collected dirt, molds and protrusions that could impede the new shingles from lying flat. The old hip cap shingles are then removed to eliminate any unevenness across the hip. This must be done at all hips and at the peak ridge as well. Next, trim about one and a half inches from the bottom row of asphalt shingles to expose the old drip edge trim. Remove the old starter trim so that the new springhouse drip edge fits on flat. If removing the trim proves difficult, simply use a claw hammer to remove the nails. Now let's move to the valley. First, we trim the bottom from the old flashing so that the new drip edge can lay flat. We then install the new Springhouse starter trim using nails. The new starter has a wider drip edge on the bottom, so it can accommodate the combined thickness of old and new shingles if required. At the hip, the new drip edge is trimmed to the appropriate angle. Note, at the bottom of the trim we leave about an extra inch that can be folded around to make the joint look neater from the ground. Then, measure the required length to the adjacent drip edge, make a rough pencil mark, cut it to size, and nail it in place. Now, we install the ice and water shield onto the valley flashing. First, measure and cut the shielding to size. Then, remove the adhesive backing and affix the ice and water shield using staples. Next, we measure and cut the ice and water shield to apply it right on top of the old shingles up to the hip. Our installer chose to staple it down for convenience. He then unrolls it and makes the required cut at the hip. Next, he unrolls it again while removing the adhesive backing and pats it down in place. He staples it for convenience, but the adhesive back makes that unnecessary. We repeat this procedure to install ice and water shield on the other side of the hip. Note how shielding sheets overlap each other to ensure water tightness. Again, trim off the excess at the drip edge. Now, we measure, cut and roll out the non-adhesive polypropylene underlayment over the ridge and staple it in place. 
Note this underlayment sheet traverses the peak ridge and must overlap the underlayment sheet below to ensure a watertight seal. In much the same manner, we now proceed to measure, cut, and install a dormer flashing using nails. Next, we move to the new roof section of our simulated roof, where we'll measure, cut, and apply the adhesive-backed water and ice shield as before, but this time directly onto the plywood substrate of the simulated new roof. To install the starter or drip edge, the first piece is cut to match the 45 degree angle where it meets the adjacent starter trim. The balance of starter trim is then measured, cut, and nailed in place. As on the re-roof section, we now install non-adhesive underlayment over the ridge of the simulated new roof portion using staples. To install the new valley flashing, measure and mark the required cut, then trim the flashing to match the 90 degree angle where the drip edge meets. Note, the bottom of each valley flashing is factory labeled. That's because flashing lengths are tapered, so each fits easily into the adjacent lengths above or below it. When trimming the new valley, this installer uses its center rib to create a one inch tab of steel, which he then splits and folds over the drip edge to secure the new valley to the flashing below it. The new valley is then simply nailed directly over top of the old one. Then, carefully measure, mark, and trim the valley flashing at the top and hammer it down so that it crests and overlaps the peak ridge. To install perimeter or gable end flashing, measure, mark, and cut it to size. When joining pieces of the perimeter end flashing, note how this installer opens up the channel and trims the outside piece to a taper so that the pieces slide together easily for a firm joint. The perimeter flashing is then nailed in place. Now we're ready to start installing springhouse shingles. Alternating A and B shingles are secured to the surrounding flashings or shingles on all four sides. Each shingle's bottom crimp interlocks with the flashing or shingle immediately below it. Sliding an A shingle upward between two B shingles interlocks its side crimps to the shingles on either side of it. Nail clips then secure the top of the shingle to the roof substrate beneath it. To install the first A shingle, measure 34 and a quarter inches from the gable end flashing. Note how the crimped bottom of the shingle slides over the bottom of the drip edge flashing to lock in place, after which two clips hook into the upper crimp of the shingle and are nailed down to the roof. The shingle is now fixed and cannot move vertically up or down. Before installing the next shingle, an alternate B shingle, note how the installer trims the bottom corner of the shingle to ensure that once it's inserted into the channel on the edge flashing, water will run straight down the channel. Then, he taps the shingle gently into place and secures it with two clips using galvanized nails. Now, to start the second row of shingles in the proper position, simply align the left edge of the shingle directly above the midpoint of the second of the four embossed shapes imprinted on the shingle below it. Again, securing the shingle with the two clips that are nailed down. Here, the installer cuts the end shingle of the second row to fit, and again trims the left side of the bottom edge so water is routed straight down the channel. Then he gently taps it into place and secures it with two nail clips. The balance of Springhouse shingle installation simply repeats this procedure, so let's speed it up and see how easily Springhouse shingles are to install where they meet the valley flashing. On the valley end of the shingle, the installer draws a line to mark the angle where the two channels will interlock. Next, he draws a parallel line about an inch outside that point. The second line is where he will cut the shingle. He uses a bending bar to fold and create an interlocking channel on the cut end of the shingle. 
Once again, he trims about an inch from the shingle's bottom hook where it will lock onto the valley but allow water to run freely down the channel. Once this is done, he simply slides and taps the shingle into place and installs it the same as he would a full shingle. Next, on the row above, he installs the last shingle, first measuring where it will meet the last full shingle in the row, then cuts it to length and bends and trims the bottom to create the channel that will interlock with the flashing. Then he installs the final full shingle in that row, a B shingle, in the normal fashion, sliding it up between the shingles on either side, tapping it gently into place, and securing it with nailed clips. Now that you've seen the installation basics, let's just speed up through the balance of shingle installation until we get to the hip. When installing the last shingle in each row at the hip, he marks the shingle, trims it to match the angle of the hip, and secures it with clips on top, and nails at the cut end. Again, we'll speed through the basic shingling until we're ready to install the hip caps. Like all Springhouse shingles, hip caps are easy to install. The installer measures and marks the first hip cap to match the bottom corner. After making the cut, he again notches the bottom of the shingle, then uses the bending bar to create a channel that will interlock with the bottom shingle on each side of the hip. Then he taps it snugly into place and secures it with galvanized screws through the white nylon flange at the top of the hip cap. Springhouse hip caps are tapered for a professional appearance and fit and each interlocks securely with the one immediately below it. Now the installer uses color match sealant to ensure water tightness around the gable flashing. As you can see here, the procedure for installing Springhouse ridge caps is virtually identical to the installation of hip caps. And voila, another beautiful Springhouse shingle roof is born. A visualized diagonal line is used to ensure proper positioning of the shingles, the pattern of which repeats every eight rows. If the convenience and value of a beautiful shingled roof that will last a lifetime intrigues you, remember, now you can have it all. Springhouse gives you the beauty of shingles along with the strength of steel. To find out more, visit springhousesteelshingles.com.